I can see like he was interested because he started bird dogging her like crazy. She was hopping all over the place and he was just right behind her. You could just tell it was that like trot that they do with their Mm -hmm. head down and he's following her along. initial point was to go in like I did yesterday and there was trucks there so I had to Mm. change kind of my access point so I got out of my car and I checked the wind and it was pulling it down off the mountain Mm. so I was able to go in below the clear cut that they were using and littered with tracks and beds and there was some urine I could tell was from a doe and heat And so I said, well, I'm losing daylight. I found a good spot to sit where I could see out through the hardwoods and into that clear cut. And just before dark, I heard crashing coming down off the mountain. It was two does followed by him. Wow. And he came in grunting. And I threw (laughs) myself forward to get around like a little sapling. And the does caught the movement and they Mm. stopped. And the minute they stopped... He stopped, and I checked the head. I had no clue it was him until I got up to him. Because you guys had pictures of him? Yeah, for four, so, four years. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> three. Three years of I'm that kidding. book. And it, the cool part is to see, and the crazy part is is it was only in one spot yep. on one flat yep. when in a three-day period. It, we had, that was like On we had the talk- opposite side of the brook that runs through there. No, so something. It, it's one of those things where, like, I had this theory in my head, like, I... I think one time a year, maybe it happens multiple times a year, but I think one time a year, a buck cruises his range. Yep. And he goes and sees what new, bu- what new bucks are in there, what, you know, where some doe groups are, if things have changed. Cause September, it was late September, he made an appearance on that one flat and then ghost. Never again. Wow. Never would see him again. Never. And I, like I said, she mentioned before, we don't run a lot of cameras. There was one year I ran a lot of cameras and I actually think it hurt me more than it helped me because I focused so hard. I had 13 different bucks on camera, small, big, it didn't matter, but it was like, Oh my God, this is the Mecca. There's tons of deer here. And then all of a sudden the, the rut hit. They're gone. <laughs> gone. And I hunted that spot really hard and after that year, I said, I'll never do that again. Mm-hmm. I'm like, there is no way. I said, I will make sure I bounce because all those deer, I mean, there was occasional deer you'd have come cruising through or whatever, right. but they were not hanging out there. So it was like, I I'm, I'm just can't do that to myself again. That's right. spending way too much time in one spot. So, but it was, uh, that was pretty intense phone call. That's for sure. I was actually coming out of the woods that night. And you guys know there's no service up there until you get back to a closer spot where service pops in. And keep like, in mind, I'm also five months pregnant yeah. while this is going down. Yeah. So when he listens to the voicemail, she's about in tears, he thinks out of worst. breath. And I'm like, Oh my God, she's pregnant. What's going on. And the yep. last three or last three or four words I heard was, I just shot a huge buck or something. And I'm like, Oh my God, what is <laughs> happening right now? So, and then it wasn't shortly after that, all of a sudden, ping, 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 my phone started popping up in the pictures of that deer and i'm like i don't i don't know if she realizes it yet but i know exactly what deer that is i'm like i can't believe it i said he is finally dead i'm like i I can't believe she just killed him like that so you guys i haven't actually had you guys go up there but when we brought him to the taxidermist that taxidermist called me and he goes have you really checked this deer out? And we were like, yeah, we looked at him. He's pretty scarred up. He goes, no, I don't think I have ever seen a deer this scarred up. I wow. mean, his his eyes had holes in them. He's got a giant scab on the back of his neck. And he was like, you know, there's only so much I can hide. And she was like, don't hide any yeah. of it. I don't, mm-hmm. I want it all to be there. That's him. That's yeah. his character. He yeah. had to make eyelids on one of the eyes yeah just to get because he it. was that tore up yeah. wow one so. was full of scars so 
So he's a fighter. Oh yeah, yeah. big time. That's he, cool. He's yeah. a wicked buck. What did he weigh? One sixty four. One sixty four. Yep. That was a pretty intense week. I yeah, and then you got your big buck yeah. in Maine. Do you want to kind of tell that story? <laughs> yeah. So we were. I but left for Maine. How so about talk about your whole family last year? Yeah. It was yeah. pretty yeah. incredible. So, yeah. Uh, normally how it works for us is first weekend i normally hunt with her it's our time we spend we get to hunt together and then yep. of course she had a rifle tag last year so that <laughs> couldn't worked out good for us but, that ain't happening this year so sorry the um as the as the week went on of course both of us have to work the first week so none of us we neither of us got to hunt so normally when the second week comes up i hunt saturday with her mm-hmm. and then half a day on sunday sometimes she goes sometimes she decides not to go because it's only half a day i can go well, I jump in the rig and he- start headed for Maine, and I'm like two or three hours into the trip, and she sends me a text message, and her dad shot a buck. So I was like, oh, that's awesome. That's, that's a pretty cool start to the week. Yep. So we're up there. First day goes by. Monday evening is when we just had the, that conversation. I get the voicemail, and all of a sudden she shoots, and she shoots a big buck. And I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Did you just say Sam shoots a buck or Tad shoots a buck? I'm like, this is pretty cool. My well, Wednesday had already got one. Yeah. Had when, already shot his. Wednesday rolls around. I forgot about that. Your yep. uncle got one, too. They're yep. bow season. <laughs> yep. So uh, Wednesday rolls around. She calls me up, and I'm at the camp at, by myself. It's dark at this point. And she is ecstatic. Her mom killed her first buck in over 50 years of hunting. And like, and her mom had been threatening the last couple of years, like, this is my last year if I don't. Yeah. And yeah. she refused to shoot a doe. She goes, I want my first deer to be a buck. So she ended up killing that first buck. Seven pointer. I, I know more <laughs> wow. than hang up the phone. Ten minutes later, my dad calls. And he's like, I just shot a huge buck. And I'm oh like, God. You got to be kidding me. I'm like, <laughs> I was like, all right, don't pull my leg. He go, I'm not, I, I, and at that point in his voice, I could hear it. I'm like, are you, I'm like, where is it? He goes, I just sent you a picture. Blah, blah, blah. He's going, blah. I couldn't even understand him. He was talking yep. so fast. He was like one of those jumping jelly beans. And I'm like, yep. what is going on? And he, the picture popped through and it was that buck. And I'm like, what? And that big, was nice big buck. Yeah. That was his first buck in 45 years. And I'm like, dandy, man, I was like, this is just crazy crazy stuff that happens so thursday comes and i had a complete meltdown while i was up there we were getting like the perfect little dustings of snow every day it was washing out the old tracks it was just you couldn't ask for better conditions and time if if i was to pick out one thing probably that's equal or as much that i beat myself up on more than the whole bad shot thing is time yeah because i always feel like i only have so much time to get something done especially like vermont's only a 16 day season Mm -hmm. maine and new hampshire run for five weeks straight between Mm -hmm. their muzzleloader and rifle so it's like i feel like i'm always so stricken on time and i gotta push push Mm -hmm. push push so i'm fairly new to the tracking game and i was just trying to go so hard and so fast and i would come into a barnyard and I would just confuse myself because I'm just trying to go and go and go. And I'm like, I need to get out of this barnyard. I need to make time up on this deer. So I finally had a complete meltdown. And like I told you guys, I walked onto the biggest track of my life. And I walked over the top of it because I was so frustrated that day because it went right back down to a spot I just came out of that was just loaded with tracks. And I'm like, I'll never be able to sort them out in there. So I'm on my way back to camp. And it's a long drive back to camp up there. And... I finally said to myself, I'm like, all right, you just got to calm down, slow down, be methodical, pay attention to the details and really just be intimate with the track, figure it out. It's like a puzzle. You got to just figure it out. Mm -hmm. So Friday comes along and I ended up tracking a deer and I jumped it out and I saw that deer. So I'm like, perfect. This is, that was much better. Like I, but I went through a barnyard. I picked that deer out. It wasn't. I just wanted to follow a deer to see if I could catch up to it. I'm pretty sure it was either a small buck or a doe. It, I, it never really left any peace signs to tell me the difference. I'm So I was like, needless to say, Friday ended, Saturday comes. And most of the time when I'm up in Maine, 
of course, you can't hunt on Sundays in Maine. Saturday was the last day. I I only get so much time to hunt. So I'm like, I can hunt Sundays in Vermont. I'm going to try to go back if I can. Well, that morning I had made a plan that if I didn't see a track by 11 o'clock, I'd take the drive and go back to the camp. Well, I had gone into one spot and there was a bunch of tire marks up on this one road. And I'm like, okay, I'm like, I'm just going to go check out a different spot. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, it, it's only across the river. I'm like, it really can't be that different. So I go into this other spot and I'm driving down the road and, and I ended up meeting a Mainer up there. Super awesome guy. And he was sitting there and I'm like, I drive by him. He waved and I'm like driving down the road and all of a sudden I pull up and I'm like, Oh my God, that's a big buck track right there. <laughs> like looking at it and I'm like, what do I do? Sitting there in the truck and I'm getting mad and I'm like, I got to back up. I got to back up and ask that guy. So I backed up him and I had a conversation for a little while there. And he's like, no, he goes, I shot a buck the other day. He says, I was just out. He says, I, I usually stay up here for most of the season. He goes, I'm just out and about. So he said, Go ahead. You want to take that track? Go for it. I said, man, are you sure? I was like, I really, if you got somebody in here, I don't want to screw anybody up. And he goes, nope, go for it. So I drove down, I parked, got out of the truck and the buck had come out of the thick side of the road and was headed across into like some clear cuts. Mm -hmm. But he got into the road and I didn't I must've drove over this part and missed it, but he got into the road and he kind of walked up the road again and he almost, he went back onto the side he came out of. And I don't know if it was just a timing thing or if he had been following her, but there must, there was a doe there and she kind of bounded back. Now, this is going to be a long story. I'm a super detailed person. Mm-hmm. Like I try to pay attention to every little thing when I really put my mind to it. So she bounded off, he lost interest, and then just turned, took a 90 and went right across the road. And as soon as he got into that clear cut, he just started lining. He went probably three, 400 yards into that clear cut, and he comes into a bunch of doe tracks. And there's beds, and he made a scrape. And there was just tracks everywhere. And I'm like, all right, I'm not even going to waste my time. I'm going to back up to pass that scrape, and I'm just going to cut to my left, and I'm going to make a big loop and see if I can figure out where he came out of this mess. So I started going around found a couple doe beds in there and immediately right then I'm like I'm gonna start gaining time on this buck if I think what he's doing I mean he was just doe crazy I finished out the circle got about three quarters away around I found his track coming out and I'm like I'm positive that's his track but I'm gonna finish the circle just to investigate finish the circle sure enough that was him run back get on it he starts headed up through the clear cut he goes probably another 250 300 yards And I come to this bed, and it's big, like way bigger than the other ones. But it's not giant. Like, it's not one of those beds where you can look at it and be like, oh, my God, that's a 200-pound buck. He, It was just super small but thick, like super thick. And I'm like, this is a good buck regardless. I'm like, I'm going to stay. So I stayed on his track. I I went through the bed. Had I looked to the left – hindsight i think i would have figured it out quicker because what i think had happened was the bed that he had made was actually him coming back and he laid down in his backtrack after he went and made a small circle right and what he did was he went up through kind of cut off to the right and he went and he skirted the edge of this clear cut because there was a bunch of um, spruces up there and there was like three or four doe beds in there. Well, two of them must have been fresh because he bumped doe out of them. And they must not have been ready because he just kept right on that circle. Comes around and he literally, I'm looking back down and I'm like, oh, that was his track. That was his track going off to the left. I should have looked. But sure enough, I come back down to that bed. It was him. And at that point, I think, is when he laid down. After mm-hmm. he made that little circle, he laid down. And I look off to my right now because I'm looking back down his back track and I can see f- two fresh rubs and they were green. And I'm like, that just happened like m- maybe an hour or so ago. So I go up and I'm checking them out. And at that point, I'm looking at the rubs and I can kind of see where his antlers hit it. They were kind of half-hearted. And I was like, yep. okay, I'm peeled off, started following his tracks. He gets to the back of the clear cut and he meets up with another doe. And immediately... I can see like he was interested because he started bird dogging her like crazy. She was hopping all over the place and he was just 
right behind her. You could just tell it was that like trot that they do with their mm-hmm. head down and he's following her along. And I think two doe had come through before her and she was trying to catch up to them. And then he came behind her and caught, and this is the way I was playing it out in my mind. If that's exactly what was happening, I'm not positive, but I'm following them up through and they've got those slash cuts. It's like those lanes that they cut down through the woods. And I follow them up into this lane and all of a sudden we had talked about this earlier. At this point, I didn't know how wide the buck was. I just, I had a, I knew he had a decent rack and he had a big hoof on him. Yep. And I'm walking up through and that doe turns off to the left and goes through the six like cedars. There's like cedar lanes. She plows through it. He goes in right behind her and it's thick. Like I'm going through sideways I'm ducking under (laughs) branches and I'm, I get to the edge of it and I poke the gun barrel out and I like just barely stick my head out to where I can see up and down both ways. And I I had a feeling with as much as he was messing with her that I was gaining time on him because he really wasn't going fast. He wasn't striding out there. He was just kind of taking his time and she boogered off to the left and he turned to the to the right once he got into that lane so i don't know if she had gone ahead of him and had run out into that thick stuff and popped back out and he either saw her or smelt her but when he went to the right he had started following those other two deer tracks well she popped back out in front of him and he was bird dogging her again well this lane's probably 300 yards long he's following her up the lot lane and i can look ahead and in the the lane there is a deadfall cedar down and it's above my hip height i'm five nine so i figured it to be pretty close to like three three and a half feet in the air i get up to that tree and all of a sudden i can see where the doe stopped and she ducked under it and went and i can literally see in the snow where he went up to that tree and he smelt her tracks and he backed up to go around it right then I was like, the wheel started turning because I'm like, there is more than enough space for a buck to have dipped under there if he was that intent about doing it. Well, he backs up and he goes around the edge of that tree and he's following those other two deer tracks. And I happen to come around the tree and I look off to my left and right there are these two beech shoots. And this is how he kind of, I'm not big on the name in deer but this was kind of what came to my mind but you know how when somebody plows up your driveway and the so after that first wet snow and you yep. get that like sod that rolls up he took these two beet shoots and all that snow and there was just moss and dirt three foot wide on both sides of those beet shoots and i mean he just had it all tore up and i'm like holy he spent some time right here i'm like okay yep. and at that point i'm not seriously not trying to steal anything out of rick labby's book i looked up into the sky and i'm like pop this i need your help uh help me see this track through i want it i i think this is a good buck just help me see this one through so i turn and i look the doe he had been following the smaller one she went straight out from those rubs like she just plowed through that stuff and i'm like oh okay well i fought i'll following the tracks up with my eyes and I can see where the other two doe went up and they just kind of casually turned in. This is when I was like, okay, they're way, they're further ahead. He's more concerned with other doe. This is the second time my, the wheels really started cranking on how big the rack was on this deer because all of a sudden he turns and he's walking up the edge of that cedar and you could tell like he was trying to find a spot to go in there, but it was just a wall of cedars. Yep. He walked probably 20 to 30 yards past those last doe tracks, and he was like, nope, I, I, I'm i headed. And he just plowed through this stuff. It was thick enough that I literally had to get down on my hands and knees, and I army crawled through it. And it was probably 8 to 12 feet that I had to go through. And I'm kind of like trying to stay because I'm like, man, I feel like I'm getting close and I'm trying to stay to where I can get the gun barrel through the trees if I have to. And I pop up and all of a sudden I'm in this little tiny open spot. I mean, it's like 10 by 12 spot with just little poles. And there was deer tracks everywhere. Like, I mean, I'm like, oh man, it is thick in here and I got to try to sort this out. So it took me a second. And this will kind of get more to the hindsight of what happens after everything. But, of course, you're walking through there and you're weaving through all that stuff. So you're 
ticking branches and you're kind of like, you're making noise. And I finally had kind of figured out that I thought the other two doe had gone in there and they had turned and gone to the right. Like they were going to continue on that lane, but through the thick stuff. Well, that other doe, she got in there and she just blasted out of there to the left again. And I found where I thought his tracks went up through there. And there was this little blow down. And I stepped up over the blow down and there was like a little land rise, probably like two, three foot tall. And I got up and I'm standing on top of that land rise and I'm looking down and I'm trying to follow the tracks with my eyes. And I'm like, all right, I can't see seven yards in front of me. I got to try to follow it with the best and try to pick my path through here. I've already made a bunch of noise. I lift my foot off the ground and I hear, and I'm like immediate, like hair on the back of my neck. I'm like that was close (laughs) i look up and i'm scanning through the thick cedars and 10 yards in front of me i see legs coming at me and i'm like okay focus i'm like i started getting the gun up and as i almost get the gun to my shoulder and he stops and i'm like well i think that's the buck i mean that's right where that grunt because at first when he grunted i kind of was like Looking around a little bit like, was that a tree or was that really what I heard? But when you hear a grunt, it's really hard to not distinguish it. It's it's pretty obvious, Mm -hmm. at least for me. Because I've heard, that is one thing. I've heard a lot of bucks grunt over the years. And all of a sudden, he, he moved again, and I just flung the gun up. I flicked the safety off, and his head, he grunted just before he dipped. And all of a sudden, he dipped into an opening like seven yards away. And I just see these massive beams coming off his head. <laughs> I pulled into the first opening I saw as soon as his shoulder came into it. I, boom! Of course, all I can think of is Larry Benoit's first haunt on this first video ever. When he shoots and it just sounds like, because it's so thick and there's so much snow. Yeah. That's exactly what it sounded like. There was no Muffled. rapport. It yeah. was just, poof. I hit the deer. I can see him buck up. He blows out of this cedar and he's running right at me. He comes up and he stops three yards from me and not even thinking about it. I subconsciously must have just done it. But I shucked. I I remember now thinking back. I remember hearing the brass tink off the tree when I slammed the next shell in. Yep. And he's standing there three yards from me in the open. And I just remember him lifting his head up and his eyes spotted me. And it was like that. Oh, F word. Yeah. Like his eyes went from being squinty to that big and. I just put it on his chest, pulled the trigger again, and when he when it hit him that time, he just dropped to the ground and he snow plowed. I could have kicked him when he slid by wow. me, and he died five feet to my left. Wow! And uh, it That's was pretty exciting. One of those things where you just stop and you're standing there for a second. And you're like, "Oh my did god, did that just happen? That's Holy! Crazy. It just one of those like probably never ever happen again in my life. But to be that close, it. I hope it does. It will. That was, it that will. was super, keep, super intense. You keep tracking but it. It will. It was definitely, that was probably one of the highlights. It was the highlight of my deer hunting career so far. That was, And it was a giant. Yeah. It was a nice buck. Yeah, it, called old buck. But yep. Big character on him. He had nine points. I don't know if you'd actually call his main beam point a drop time, but it kind of comes out. It points down toward the ground. Yep. And he's got a little... Bra- uh, drop time that he broke off but he's just super wide and heavy it just i think that somebody measured him at 22 and a quarter inches wide but just a yeah. super old buck cool no he's cool. a wicked cool buck i know that when you got him and you posted pictures of him on facebook i instantly i was like man that's an ancient buck yeah and, it, and you had him aged yeah yeah 10 and a half ten came and back a half. from the uh, the deerage.com that is sweet yeah it was it was just a fun fun day like you take a little bit of time and you really take in the moment because that that was actually at that time the first buck i had ever killed tracking so that was that slow down like you hear guys like push 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 yeah you got to find your pace and go with it yeah because you're i mean you do you want to catch up to them but at that same time if you're missing little details, it could be that little detail that in the end, that's why you blow them out. Or It's the difference maker. And, and what's funny too about tracking is everything needs, all your ducks need to line up in a row. Like if you would have looked to the left when you came to that bed and noticed that that was his tracks, 
coming back or whatever, and you didn't go on his little loop, then you wouldn't have caught him at seven yards in the spruce yeah. or in the cedars. You know what I mean? Like, it's all those little things that you did. Like, there was a million different possibilities of what you could have done on that track, but you did the right ones because yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's, he's at the tax. It's like so. Sam and I talked about with her buck that she just got with her bow. It was not a great shot, but the shot killed the deer. Mm-hmm. I truly believe, and I have always said this, I really do think that when things are meant to happen, oh, yeah. that it's meant to be, that yeah. that deer was meant to be hers. That deer was meant to be mine. It was just meant to all unfold yeah. that way. And that's exactly how I took that hunt. I was like, you know, what happens if I had done this different? Yeah, and then I, still, then I started doing the role playing in my head. Like, what made him come back? Was it me making the noise in the brush? Come was back. it? Did he think I was the doe? Or did he think I was another buck coming in? trying to take his dough very you know, good possibility you're just like you, all those things that's yep. what makes tracking so exciting to me is every hunt is a different journey it's mm-hmm. just they unfold differently each time yep. so but yeah it was pretty crazy that that deer over there that one had a pretty crazy story too your bow but, kill yeah hey you want to go ahead, you want to hit on that yeah so that's a beautiful bow bow buck for Vermont. Yeah, that that's was beauty. Uh so no history with that deer. That's just a so I've hunted this spot for a couple years and kind of you start getting things figured out a little bit. Well, we at that time she Sam had just moved down here. So I was there was one camera that I was running for her to kind of more keep her motivated to like, hey, you gotta go in there and sit. You know, those deer are definitely using that area. Well, at that time, our relationship was pretty new. She was working two jobs. You know, we were trying to make sure we afforded rent and groceries and all that stuff. So she had to go to work that night. And I got out of work, and it I had got actually out of work late. And I'm like, man, I got to find a spot to go. And I, this spot popped in my mind. And the only thing I could think of was I, all the deer that she had been getting on that camera had been coming in super late. And I'm like, if they're coming super late, I'm just going to put my head down and I am going to mog as high up the mountain as I can go, get to where I think a good pinch or funnel area is going to be and just see if maybe I'm catching those deer staging up or coming down. So I just would like to add when he says mog down, you ain't going to keep up with him because his (laughs) normal pace is a sprint. I get yep. I get yelled at a lot by a lot of guys. <laughs> he turns that, around. He's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "Why are we running?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she. My nickname's the Mountain Goat because I just like yeah. I, I'm a lot like you are when that comes to that. Like if I look, I could look at the steepest. If I think there's a big buck up there, they ain't gonna stop me trying to go up there and find him. Yeah, right. Just it, it will. Go. I've fallen yeah. many of times. I actually pushed a boulder down the mountain <laughs> after falling. Yeah, yeah, we've had some interesting <laughs> hunts together. <laughs> so, yeah, with the snap around, like, why'd you do that? <laughs> well, I didn't know the boulder was going to roll down the hill. <laughs> I mean, honestly, a boulder. Why, and I, why and at would that me point, putting my feet on it yeah, make it roll down the just, hill? <laughs> at that point, you just learn to laugh because it is. It's just funny. Like, how, yeah. it wasn't like she did it intentionally, but it's. I was like, like I'm pretty sure if there okay. were deer here, they're not anymore. They're not anymore. <laughs> yeah. So that's funny. Uh, so I get about halfway up, and I stop, and I'm like. God, is this the right plan? You're always like second guessing yourself. And I'm like, so I stand there for about five minutes and I'm like trying to figure out the wind and I'm trying to like go through the scenarios in my head. And I'm like, nope, go with your gut feeling. Mm -hmm. Just go, go. And I mean, I get up there, I'm drenched in sweat and I'm like, I'm never going to see a deer tonight. There's no way. I mean, the thermals are still pulling up the mountain. I'm like, there's just no way. All those deer are coming down. They probably smelt me long before now, mm-hmm. but I'm like, I'm up here. I'm just going to find a place. So I get up in the tree and this is on the national forest. So, you know, I'm, I'm up in this tree and I'm looking out and people don't realize when you hunt on steep mountains, you don't just go 16, 12, 16 feet in a tree. You got to get way up there because if you don't, those deer, when they're coming down, they're looking, love they're looking right yeah. at you. So I get way up in there, and all of a sudden the wind starts doing this swirling part. Well, I, as I'm sitting there and light's starting to fade, I'm like, what do I got to lose? I already made a ton of noise. I probably smell. I'm like, I'm just going to try grunting while I'm up here. 
So there's probably like 45 minutes left. And I grunt a couple of times. I wait a couple of minutes. I grunt a couple more times. And as I'm sitting there, I, I thought I could hear something, but I wasn't sure. So I have this weird thing. When I'm in a tree stand, especially, or eat anything, if I'm hunting on the ground, when it starts getting later in the night and the, the temperature starts to drop, if nothing's going on, I'll stand up or I'll sit there and I'll draw my bow back just to see, like, okay, mental note, mm -hmm. it was hard to pull back. Like, just keep that in mind for if a deer comes in. You got to right. make sure the right situation. So I get up, and there's, like, an old, I don't even know what you'd call, where the old bulldozers used to bulldoze the roads up in the mountains. And there was a white piece of birch bark, and I can just remember I stood up, and I drew back, and I pulled down on that, and all of a sudden I hear snap, and I'm like, what? Ah. I drop the bow down like that, and I look over my left shoulder, and here he is coming down, and I mean on a steady pace, and he's 30 yards from me. I'm like, how did that deer get that close? And I didn't see him or hear him, and he is just coming. Well, at this point, I'm turned completely the opposite way, and I'm left-handed. So I start scooching around the tree, and I mean like gremlin steps. I'm like yeah. going around the tree. <laughs> I get about halfway around, and all of a sudden my boot goes, eat. I'm like, oh, and he did slammed his legs into the ground. He looks right up in the tree at me, and I'm like, I'm silhouetted. This buck's gone. He's looking at me, lays his ears back, puts his head back down, he starts walking. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. So I start turning more, turning more, and all of a sudden he gets probably 10 yards from me, slams him on again, and he looks up at me in the tree, and I'm like, now he's definitely gone. Kind of looks up at me puts his head back down, sniffs out in front of him a little bit, looks back up at me, and he takes like two more steps, and I just ripped the bow back, and I swung just as he did that. Well, that movement stopped him again, and it couldn't have been any better. He locks him up, takes one step back with his left foot, and he curls his head back behind a beech tree, and he's looking up at me, and I'm like, I'm aiming dead center of that pocket. I had no idea what he was. I just know I saw points and I just I could see it and I'm like I just picked the crease I let the arrow go and I heard the flop and I'm like that sounded good it mm -hmm. just had that like pop sound and I'm like usually that's in the diaphragm somewhere close so I'm sitting in the tree and it's it gets dark and I'm like okay I gotta get down and check my arrow so I get down and I check the arrow and I'm like oh. guts and dark red blood. Mm. And I'm like, I got to get out of here. I got to just mm. leave this deer be. I got to get out of here. So I head back out. I head down. Practically run back to the truck. And I'm like, I'm just going to give him a bunch of time. Texted a bunch of my buddies. Texted them the blood. You know, just kind of getting everybody's feeling on what I should do. And d depending on, doesn't seem recently, but in years past, there would it's nothing to sit it would have been nothing to sit in that tree and hear coyotes down the ridge or up the ridge so i was like getting pretty bent out of shape about that because i'm like man i just mm -hmm. that was definitely a good buck i don't want to lose it to coyotes right so i finally got a hold of the guy that i used to go to the camp with and he's mm -hmm. like well what do you think and i'm like i don't know i said i just i don't feel comfortable leaving him i'm mm -hmm. like because i just have a really weird feeling that he will not be there in the morning. Either they're going to push him off themselves or he's going to be gone. So we get there, hike all the way back up in there, get on the blood, and I can look, and it is so steep at where he went down through, I could pretty much follow without even having to follow blood, his bound marks. Well, he gets down to the next shelf and he stops. And this is an awesome experience to be able to use in like my hunter education classes that I do because – it's one of those really key things about giving deer time when you're, especially on certain shots. So we're falling the blood down and we get to the next flat and you can see where he stopped and he went to a walk. And then I could see like the spots of blood mm -hmm. and I'm falling with the flashlight and all of a sudden I lift up and I'm like, Oh boy. I said, Hey, I said, are those eyeballs right there? And he goes, Oh yeah. I said, man, I'm pretty sure that's him. Cause if, that was a deer about its wits. I said that deer would be gone. gone by now. Yeah. And I put the flashlight back down and I'm like, of course, no bow, not nothing. Just knives in case we had to dress him out and stuff. Mm -hmm. 
And we're sitting there, and I pick the flashlight back up, and he's looking at us, and he turned away. And I'm like, hey, he's sick. I'm like, he's hurting. So we backed out, walked way up on the ridge again. We sat down and just waited there. And I'm like, here's my – actually, the, it was – the gentleman's idea. He's like, I got nothing better to do. What are you doing tomorrow? I said, well, I guess I'm calling into work. I said, I'm not just going to leave. He's like, well, let's just hang out here. He's like, what do we got to lose? Mm-hmm. So we sat for about an hour. All of a sudden I heard something and I'm like, man, I said, I'm pretty sure he just got up and moved. He says, are, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure. So we get up, we walk back down there, get to that point take the flashlight and I look up and I'm like, Oh, I said, he's gone. He's like, what do you mean? I said, he's not there anymore. So I take two more steps and I look and all of a sudden I can see like he turns his head like that and I can see the eyeball. I was like, Oh, okay. What he had done is he had got up and repositioned himself and mm-hmm. he had kind of slid around the tree that he was at. And I'm like, okay. So we backed out again. We went, sat for another hour. We're sitting there and it's starting to drizzle rain and I hear a noise again, and I'm like, that was louder than the first time. I said, I'm pretty sure he got up, and he either went somewhere Cr- or yeah, he did yeah. something. And he goes, are you sure? And I said, yeah, because he can't hear very good. And he's mm-hmm. like, are you positive? And I said, yeah, I'm positive. Something definitely happened. So we get up, we walk down there, and as we're walking down there, I take the flashlight, and there is no eyeballs at that tree this time. And I'm like, oh, he definitely, either he walked off, he got off, so... We walk over to the tree, and it is like a drop-off like that. And I'm looking, and I'm kind of like following the blood, and all of a sudden I move over, and he is three feet from us, but he's like four feet down, and he's just laying there. And I'm like, oh, okay. So we started evaluating. His kind, of, his head was up, but he was doing the, like mm-hmm. his head was just going around in circles. And I'm like, we got to back out. We got to give him a little bit more time. He's obviously going to expire here soon. Mm-hmm. It's not something as a deer hunter that you want to see. It's just, you have a lot of respect for the animals and you just, you, that is the one hard part. You don't, yeah. I'm sure people are going to criticize me. Well, why didn't you call the game warden or why didn't you call the guy with the dog so he could dispatch him? And it's at that point we were that far into the hunt. Mm-hmm. So and needless to say, the night went on and we ended up having to expire the deer with our knives. So mm-hmm. Um, but it was just one of those things where you you really truly gain a respect for how big mature bucks and their will to live. Oh, like yeah. they they're just crazy mm-hmm. stout animals for sure. But it was just one of those crazy hunts that like how would you ever know? Like we're talking about things mm-hmm. are, that are just meant to be that that deer would stand there twice after looking at me silhouetted in a tree mm-hmm. that he wasn't going to run off that deer was just meant to be mine. Oh. My thought for He's sure. He's a beauty. What did he weigh? He was 170 clean. 170. What did he yeah. what did he score? Did you get him scored? I did not get him scored. He's got to um, be 120 at least, maybe 115, 120. If not, he might be just a little shy. Yeah. I would guess. He's a good buck though. I bet you he's 115. Nice 10. Yeah. Yeah, he's a beauty. Yeah, that one little split g2 there probably or the i don't even know what you'd call that yeah it's g3 g2 kind of split looks like a turkey track yep it does too yep that's cool yeah that's a wicked story now um i wanted to hit on a little bit you used to take a blind guy deer hunting yeah that's pretty unique you want to you want to talk a little bit about that well so i i was amazing really i'm I still am a bit, but not as much now that we have a seven month old, but I was Mm -hmm. very active in the NWTF even long. I mean, that's how Sam and I met was was at an NWTF event. So like I was very into the whole Turkey scene and stuff like that into habitat work. Well, um, a girl had brought up the idea to us here in Vermont that she would like to start some type of handicap hunt. And it become the NWTF has a name for it. They call it the Wheeling Sportsman, mm-hmm. and it's a hunt for like quadriplegic, you know, people that you know don't have the opportunity to go. Actually, one of the gentlemen we had talked about earlier, Dave King, mm-hmm. had taken this guy out a couple of times prior, and he came up to me and he goes, "Hey, I think I got a 
good guy that you could probably take on your hunt and he'd probably appreciate it. So it's not, we got connected and we, we started doing all this stuff and we actually have a film deer hunt of him shooting his first deer with a crossbow. It was crazy. So people are like, Oh, well, how do you take a blind guy hunting? It's no different than really taking anybody else, but you are, Go ahead. Who are... <laughs> I'm waiting to hear because I have no idea. <laughs> so, a lot of times, it wor- a lot of times it worked with better if I had a backpack. Mm-hmm. He reaches up and holds on to my backpack, and I'm his guide. He just follows, and then he literally wow. just steps. Your pace is very slow, just because mm-hmm. he's got to be able to step and feel everything too. You do. You make a lot of noise. It is. It is what it is. You now is he fully blind? Like, oh. does he see black? No, or is it like no, he can't see anything? Like, he cannot see anything. But what's weird is if it's sunny out, bright, mm-hmm. it hurts his eyes. Really? Right. So like he can see that shade, but it's nothing there. No picture. He can't see anything. And he actually has wow. He has a really rare disease that I can't remember the exact percentage, but he can't hear either. He's got hearing aids, so wow. he he can hear with the hearing aids in, but. He takes his hearing aids out, and I mean, it's literally like that senior home guy. Ah, ah, like he, Blind he yeah, yeah, he really can't hear. So the good part is with the hearing aids in, it definitely helps him out. So usually he hangs on to the backpack, and then you just guide him through the woods. Mm-hmm. Now for shots, he does everything like we do, but rather than put his head down on the stock, he he tips his head away and you have to look over his shoulder to line him up. Now, what people don't understand it, it's a lot more difficult than you would think it is because like you or I, no, I think it's difficult. I think (laughs) think it's very, it's it's way you don't think about youth out times 10. No, probably this is a good way, but it is almost impossible. What the most difficult part is, is we can all cheek weld. Every spot, like when you pull your gun up, yeah. you're putting your cheek on the same spot just about. You're w- probably within centimeters of being mm. in the same spot every time. You're going to be close. With him, you don't know if he's holding the gun just a little bit different or the crossbow mm. just a little bit different or however. And I can't, I don't know if my face is hitting the same spot every time on his shoulder. Because normally what I would do is lean my chin in on his shoulder. That way he had contact for me. And I could look down and see it. He did everything. Now, he, are you telling him left, right, up, down? Yeah, he does everything. So you're I like, okay, left, 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 down, down. Yeah, oh, yeah. Squeeze. Yeah, all of it. <laughs> Holy crap. So um, yeah. we ended up having a great group um, from a gentleman over in Springfield. He he was like, hey, I got a piece of property here. I think we can really make this happen if we put some time in. This was – I had a lot more time that we – this was before I had met Sam. So we, I was spending all my free time there and we had got it lined up to where this guy came down and he, he hunted with us too. Uh, and he brought a camera he's like, man, I think it would be cool to get this on film, you know, just mm-hmm. kind of show people how this all works. So we ended up, uh, he killed a, killed a turkey with a bow. One of the first weekends that was successful. It wasn't, it wasn't your, dream hunt where it just shoots and the bird goes down to chase it a little bit, but needless to say, we got it. And then, um, one of the following weekends we went out there and it's just meant to be hunts. Like we, we bumped a deer walking into a spot on this property. There was log roads through it. The guy was like, we got to go. We got to run back the way we came. He goes, we got to set up. He goes, I think I know where that deer is going to come through. So we ran back up. This is when it gets really hard. (laughs) So we're going as fast as we can back up this log road. We get into a spot. I can't even imagine. We throw these blinds up. We get in the blinds. Guy gets up and he's like, okay, I got the camera rolling. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I said, that deer is coming. I said, and she's coming right at us. She comes up and she's walking in. She sees the blinds like she knows. And I, I don't know if it triggered curiosity or what, but she kept coming at us. She gets about 25 yards. I range her and I'm like, it's time. The, his name's Josh. I'm like, Josh, it's time. I'm like, this is a now or never. 
So he get he's got the crossbow up, he's got it on the shooting stick, and I'm telling him, I'm like, okay, down, down, right, right. I'm like, bat. I'm like, she's standing there looking at us, and I'm like, okay, down, left, right, left, fire. And he squeezed, and he hits her, and she runs off. I, I could just, I knew he hit her fairly good. Mm-hmm. He was good straight up and down. I just wasn't sure height wise mm-hmm. where he was at. So we're celebrating. He was like, I got that all on video. This is like the craziest thing. So sure enough, we go. The other guy had run up the road. He watched the whole thing happen. He was like way up the log road and he watched the whole thing happen. It just one of those crazy things that you're like, how would this ever happen? Mm-hmm. And and we ended up going and we found her and it just was a great, he got so emotional because he, he at one point did have his eyesight. I think, I think he said right around 21 or 23 years old, he started to lose his eyesight. Oh, and that's when he started lo- like all that stuff. And I can only imagine it's gotta be hard. So he had it before. Right. Oh yeah. So that's nightmare. Yeah. So it's, stuff. it's gotta be tough. It It is. It's, no doubt about it. And then you got a buck with him, right? Rifle buck? No. No. We had another opportunity at a muzzleloader doe. I thought and you got a buck of... I thought... No, no. So I did have a youth hunter oh, okay. that I hunted with for a couple years that hunted with me in the mountains. Like, I got blessed there because there's not a lot of youth that will stick it out all day long and mm-hmm. hunt and hunt hard. This kid, I... I put him through the ringer. I thought for sure after that first year, I was young. I didn't know any better either. I was, you know, I was legal age to take a youth, but I, you know, I was just doing whatever I could to try to get him a deer. And the first year he saw a deer, the second year he shot at a deer way up in the mountains and it hit a limb and he didn't, it was a miss, but it it was exciting for him. He's like, Mm -hmm. oh man. So, and then the next couple consecutive years after that, he shot, Three bucks. Shot a spike corn wow. youth day, spike corn youth day, and then on his final youth day, he shot a nice six pointer. Nice. So, is he still hunting? I believe so. He went to the Navy. So, cool. w- once he graduated, he went into the Navy. So, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if. I'm sure once he gets back and he'll he's. Hunt again, yeah, yeah, he'll probably start hunting again. So, once okay. in a while, I hear from him, but I'm, he's growing boy. He's got stuff he needs to take care of in his <laughs> younger ages right now. So. All right. That's awesome. Oh, man, this has been great. It's been a good podcast. No, we appreciate it. Yeah, we'll have to get you back on because I know we could go for another probably three hours here. Oh, man. I mean, we talked for how long before we started. Oh, yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah, because uh, we, we were talking about, like, theories and stuff. Yeah. Like, we both had theories, but, yeah, well, for sure. Yeah, well, we'll have to get you back on because, you know, it's uh, it's been a good podcast. Okay. So, thank you, guys. Thanks for having Thanks, us. Sam. Thanks, Sam. appreciate Morgan. it. Thanks, Nate. Yep. All right. Well, boys, we'll see you on the next one.